Greetings and welcome to our first ever live streamed worship service from the First Presbyterian Church of Peng Yen. Welcome. We're glad that you're joining us. Well, friends, today we will be sharing in the Holy Sacrament of Communion. So if you have not already done so, we invite you to uh, have some bread and some juice as we will share the Holy Sacrament together. Also, we will be reading our singing from our blue hymnals that we've uh, distributed. Uh, you're welcome to keep these at your home. These are the old hymnals, the blue ones. And uh, we'll begin with uh, singing 100, hymn number 138, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God Almighty. But friends, first I want to let you know that if uh, you have any prayer requests at all, please let us know. Also, if you need help or if you know of someone who needs help, please let the church know. It's very important that we continue our outreach ministry and also stay connected. But friends, let us now turn our focus and attention on worshiping the Lord. Jesus himself said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them. And so let us now joyfully sing together hymn number 138, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Let us have our prayer of the day. <clears throat> Holy God, you are known to us in more ways than we can imagine or count. We marvel at the wonder and the beauty of your creation. We proclaim your glory as we gather in worship in different spaces but with one united faith, a family of faith. Help us, Lord, to experience your presence at this time, on this day, in this hour of worship. For we love you. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, as is our custom in worship, we always have a prayer of confession, a cleansing of the soul, trusting and knowing that no matter what we do or what we say, God will always love us. God's grace is with us with every breath we take. So friends, let us now offer and hear this prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy God, please receive now our personal and our corporate prayers of confession. Lord, we want to make choices that are guided by your spirit, your spirit of justice and compassion. Show us, Lord, how you want us to live together as you now receive our silent confession. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The mercies of the Lord are new every day. We are loved and completely forgiven. We will share God's kindness with others, and we will follow wherever God leads us. Amen. As is our custom to do on Sunday mornings, we share the peace of Christ. We do so today from a distance, but with the same spirit of closeness, love, faith, and friendship. The peace of Christ be with you all, and also with you. Amen. Friends, let us now hear our uh, readings from Holy Scripture. We begin first with the, in the book of Genesis with a marvelous story of creation. And as we hear these words of how God created uh, our magnificent world, we remember that the motivation for God creating this world is love. Let us hear a reading from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 2, verses 4. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. 
God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And so it was. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants, yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. 
And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth, when they were created. Amen. Let us now hear our New Testament passage, which comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew. This is commonly known as the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mount to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, friends, there are several viruses that are affecting our world and our nation. One of them is COVID-19 that is quite deadly and it is for reasons for our safety that we are not worshiping together here in the sanctuary but worshiping with a live stream over the internet, worshiping by distance. There are just a, a few of us here gathered for the sole purpose of joining together with you in worship today. Never before in the history of this congregation has God's word gone out in this way. This is a, a new era. The second virus that we are facing is racism. Like COVID-19, the virus of racism is sadly contagious. It breeds from the inside of a person, from their, their thoughts. We can't see the COVID-19 virus. Sometimes we can't see hidden forms of racism, but sometimes we can and it becomes very visible. Like COVID-19, racism also kills and destroys. There are people with COVID-19 virus who can't breathe. Perhaps they're struggling and taking medicines or even worse, connected to a ventilator to help them breathe. We connect that with George Floyd, who couldn't breathe while a police officer pressed his knee on his neck for eight minutes. Two minutes and 53 seconds after he was already unconscious. Very disturbing, very troubling images that we have seen. Another virus with which we are dealing with has to do with looting and arson and the destruction of property and violence towards others. People who are engaged in such criminal activities and behaviors dishonor George Floyd's memory. We need a vaccine for each of these viruses. We need certainly a vaccine for social justice. And that vaccine is God. The very character of God is the vaccine. The identity of who God is, is the remedy. 
It's the answer. Today is Trinity Sunday. We celebrate who God is, God's identity as a trinity. We celebrate who God is and we're also challenged by how God calls us to live out our lives as created in God's image. We are one humanity created in the image of our one creator. Historically, the Trinity has most often been described through Orthodox as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We also designate the Trinity as Creator, meaning God, Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and Sustainer, the Holy Spirit. The Trinity means that God is one in three persons each one equal. God is a relationship. Three equals working together in perfect cooperation and harmony. Theologians have described the Trinity as three persons of the same substance, one God. God also calls us to live in unity just as God is unity itself. In the Trinity, we especially see cooperation completed. While the three persons in the Trinity each have different attributes, they share in performing different tasks, creation, redemption, sustenance. In that divine unity, their distinction and uniqueness is kept intact. Being in community doesn't mean we lose our identity. Created in God's image means that we affirm our identity and we also affirm the unique identity of others. Things that make you and me unique and different. Different gifts from God are to be celebrated and affirmed, not cause for discrimination. So one of the anecdotes for the troubling racism that we are, have such concern is the very character of God. We focus on God for our remedy. Celebrating our diversity, communion and distinction. Celebrating our diversity just like the Trinity celebrates diversity. Another anecdote for racism has to be the remedy for the destructive violence that we are seeing and looting that we have witnessed so many times on the news this last week. Let's look again at God's identity. Each part of the Trinity participates in the work of the other. There's a mutual self-giving. Each person in the Trinity glorifies the other. Remember when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and a voice from heaven was heard, this is my beloved, the Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. God was lifting up the Son, Jesus Christ, encouraging people to listen to him. Listening to God and listening to each other is clearly what our world needs if we are to live in peace and harmony with one another. When I went to Sunday school as a little boy, I remember getting dressed up in a little suit and a tie and Sunday shoes. And I also remember, I'll never forget it, on the wall in our Sunday school classroom were the words, God is love. It's a quote from 1 John 4, 7. So every single Sunday I went to church as a little boy, I read that and I saw that. That has guided me my whole life. God is love. Just three words, but it gives a complete definition. Let's look at what love is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, as Scripture says. We've seen a lot of violence in the images on television and on 
the internet this week, let's focus on these words in the context of the headlines. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love does not show partiality, which means that love is indiscriminate. White, black, brown, it doesn't matter. Love does not discriminate against anyone for any reason. Faith, hope, and love abide. These three, these three remain. And the greatest of these is love. Martin Luther King Jr. said that faith, hope, and love are the magnificent trilogy of durability because they will last forever. A trilogy of durability, faith, hope, and love, they're going to go on for eternity. Somebody, I don't know who did it, but someone posted on Facebook um, a picture of Martin Luther King Jr. and there was a caption uh, that read, never burned a building, never robbed a store, never destroyed a town, changed the world. See, Martin Luther King believed in faith, hope, and love. He lived it, he believed it, and he acted on it. Faith, hope, and love, they'll be with us for all of eternity. Why? Because they are the very qualities of God. We have faith that we'll be able to worship again together here in our sanctuary. We'll be able to return to church and uh, hear the choir and see each other's faces and hear our wonderful music. We'll once again be able to fill the sanctuary with gifts for the Yates Christmas program as we do and hold ARC worship for our friends in the community. We have hoped that a vaccine will be discovered as the world cooperates, pooling all kinds of resources and energies together, working together for one common good, health for all people. We have hoped that our economy and our jobs will come back, opportunities will improve. We have love for those who struggle with the virus, for those who have lost loved ones. For those who risk their lives on their essential jobs that we greatly appreciated. We have love for those who also have lost their jobs and are struggling. We have faith that we can, with God's help, have positive, constructive dialogue that will help solve our problems that we so clearly have. We have faith that each one of us can make a positive difference towards defeating injustice. We have hope that changes will lead to greater social justice, greater safety for all people. We have hope that with God's guidance, our differences can be cause for celebration, not for discrimination. Let's also closely consider our Old Testament passage in which we hear the story of creation and all of its diversity, the different birds and trees and creatures that are mentioned. God, our creator, the Trinity, is also celebrated there. Through nature, we appreciate God's genius, God's creativity. Every day, there's a gift and surprise in the beauty of nature. We see that diversity in scripture is clearly appreciated in the beauty of nature. All the different species is totally astounding. There are over one million species of insects. I'm sure there's still more that we have yet to discover. We see a perfect harmony in the genius of creation. All of nature works together for a life-sustaining balance. The unity we see in nature, designed carefully and thoughtfully by our Creator. 
It inspires us to live in harmony with all of creation. In that creation, God calls us to take care of creation and also to take care of each other. Picture an ostrich with its long neck, its uh, two big legs, and all of its feathers. Then imagine a zebra, quite a different animal, uh, with its four legs, its black and white stripes. Two animals that are very different in appearance, yet they have something in common. Both are prey for faster animals. Both animals have to always keep alert and watchful for those fast predators. Here's the problem. Zebras have excellent smell and hearing, but very poor vision. Ostriches, on the other hand, have excellent eyesight with their big eyes, but a poor sense of smell and a poor sense of hearing. So the two different animals hang out together. They help each other. They cooperate and they travel with each other. Ostriches rely on the smell and hearing of the zebras. And the zebras rely on and count on the eyes of the ostriches. Two different animals. They're much safer when they work together. They warn each other of the dangers of head that are common to both of them. Working together. Combining our efforts for the good of all. Benefiting from our differences. That's God's vision for humanity. Amen. Friends, let us now affirm our faith which we have carried on through the traditions as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, friends, we continue in our worship by having a time of uh, prayer. I do thank you for uh, emailing me or calling me with your prayer concerns. Um, let us now join together as a family of faith in a time of prayer. Holy Lord, we lift up our prayers of praise for your glory, for your goodness, for who you are and the goodness to which you call us to live. And God, we pray, as millions of others pray, for peace and reconciliation as we work together for just treatment and opportunities for all people. We join with congregations and communities across the world who mourn as we pray for healing from violence that has brought separation. But Lord, you bring us together. God, grant us the peace, your peace, that passes understanding, a peace that inspires us to be peacemakers for our family for our community and neighbors, our country and our world. Inspired by you, Lord, we stand up for all who are oppressed. Help us to be ambassadors for your reconciliation in places that need your justice. We pray, Lord, for people's good health. 
We lift up in prayer everyone who is impacted by the coronavirus, the loss of life, the loss of employment, financial hardships, we give thanks, Lord, for all those who put their lives at risk, on the line, to detect the virus, to treat the virus, and to protect us. We pray, O oh God, for a vaccine. And in our prayers, Lord, we also think of our church family. Our, we pray for the Alderman family, offering prayers of support as they mourn the life of Phyllis. We continue in our prayers for Stuart Breeds and his family. We give thanks, Lord, for Cam. The good news we have heard that he is cancer-free. Thank you, God, for answering these prayers and all the support he has received in his family. And God, in our prayers, we rejoice and give thanks for Bob and Shire's 50th wedding anniversary. Thank you, God, for bringing them together and sustaining them and guiding them throughout 50 wonderful years of love. Continue to bless them and their family. We seek, O oh Lord, your blessings for good health, especially for James, for Myron, good health for Charles and Carl. We lift up our prayers for good vision for Kim, Prayers of support and blessings for Sue, Marilyn, Jay, Jennifer, and Joan. And God, we offer our prayers of gratitude and thanks for our troops who are serving us, their families. We are mindful of our veterans. And God, we remain steadfast in our prayers for those who are poor and homeless right here in Penyan and throughout the world. And Lord, we now offer to you our personal prayers in this time of silent prayer. Lord, we entrust our loved ones and those things for which you have given us a special concern in our hearts to your wonderful care. And so, Lord, we pray the prayer that you yourself taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, we now invite everyone to share in the Holy Sacrament of Communion. Everyone who professes a faith in Jesus Christ is welcome to a feast of God's goodness and God's grace. And so let us now hear these words. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you our thanks and our praise. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the very breath of life. You set us in this world to love and serve you. We praise you, joining our voices with the celestial choirs and with all the faithful of every time and of every place throughout the world who forever sing to the glory of your name. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty. And blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent him into this world to satisfy the longings of your people for a Savior. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and juice, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We give thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, after giving thanks to God, he took bread and he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us show our unity in Christ. Let us share with one another. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Holy God, you have nourished our spirits, our minds and our hearts through this holy sacrament and through this time of worship. Guide us, Lord, and inspire us to be your witness, to be your body, your hands, your legs in the world. Help us to do your work as we give thanks for your love and grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Friends, we also have a commission before we receive our final hymn. Let us go forward trusting in God and being alert to the opportunities that God gives us to serve. We will share our love with others. Amen. Well, friends, now let us, uh, hopefully you have your blue hymnal, and if not, perhaps you know this hymn. It is a familiar one. Hymn number 429, Lord you give the Great Commission.
And now, as we are most assuredly united with God and united with one another, let us remain steadfast, knowing that God loves us, Jesus Christ forgives us, and the Holy Spirit guides us, now and into eternity. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining us for Sunday worship. God bless you.